Hey and welcome to video number two which is meeting your clients. The purpose of this video is to help you get an understanding of your client, what their expectations are, who they are, what kind of services that they are selling, and how you can help them with a website. So how you can set up the website. So right now we're basically doing some planning in video number two as well as figuring out whether or not this client is a good client to work with or not. Some clients you actually want to avoid and in fact I'll tell you that in this particular video. So here's a list of things that you need to find out first. These are basically questions that you can ask your client to get a better understanding of them, get a better understanding of what they're expecting and how you can set up the website and of course how to price the website but we're going to talk about pricing in video number three so here's what you're going to need to find out you're going to need to find out their company who they are their mission statement and what they sell and of course you're going to need to figure out whether or not they sell a physical product or a service physical product can be or a physical product or an online product or an intangible product so a physical product, as you know, is something that you can hold in your hands. Most of these stores and places are not necessarily looking to have a site that can sell for them. They are looking for a website, or maybe they don't know that what they're looking for, but I'm just telling you this now. These types of stores generally are better if you set up a website that just is more informational, like a restaurant, for example. One thing I, I tell businesses when I sell to them, I say, hey, look, you need a website. If you don't have a website, for example, a restaurant. I was talking to a restaurant owner a few months ago, and even though I'm not really selling, you know, I don't really run my website development company now, however, since I do marketing, I asked him, I said, do you have a website? He's like, yeah, we have a website. So I go on Google, I try to find his website, I search and search and search, and finally I find his website, only to find that the stuff on his website doesn't really help the customer at all. Now, the goal of the website for a physical product or service is to, so that the customer can get a better view of the product or service, and then when they pick up the phone, to call the company they're pretty much 75 or 100 percent sold. And that's the case with me a lot of times. I'll do my research on a website first, find out what I can about the company. When I call the company I'm looking to buy. I'm not looking to be sold. So when I tell that to the business they think wow. So in this case every time somebody, or not every time, but majority of times when somebody calls they're looking to buy. That's going to save you a lot of time and it's going to save you a lot of money down the road. So in this case you're trying to figure out what kind of website they need and how you can structure that website. If it's a, it's not a physical service, a physical product, if it's a service, let's say for example training, physical training, um, fitness training. I got a guy that you know trains me at the gym paid 45 bucks an hour and if he wants to promote his service you know he could either he could do s different stuff with his website you, you see you could set up a website that is primarily informational but you see that you can find other options and other services that you can provide to him for example you could say hey I could set up a calendar where somebody could go to your website book it right away they'll buy it on site they can book your calendar and bam, you've, you've got access to your calendar, they've paid you, and guess what? You speed up your process, you save time in the long run, and you gain lots of profits. So you can look at a website, look at their needs. If you jot down their needs, and you give them tips and advice as you're doing it, a lot of times that will help close the deal. Because they're thinking, wow, this, this person's asking me all these questions, Give me all this advice and I haven't even paid yet. You know, so right now you're building trust. Asking these questions will help you 
build trust. Then the second question you need to ask is who is their audience and how do they think? All right, so if you're thinking of physical product, a restaurant, who is their audience? Basically people that are hungry people. And how do they think? Well, they want food. They want to know what kind of food do they provide. Well, if you have a website with a video on it that showcases maybe the bar or the, the video or the buffet or the buffet line, the dishes that they're providing, things like that, think about that. Somebody goes to the site, he wants to order some food, he sees the site, he knows what he wants, he calls up and makes a deal, goes up, picks it up. Or they could go to the restaurant, figure, eh, I don't really want this, and walk out. So if you tell that to the business client, most of the time they're going to think, wow, yeah, I definitely need a website. Now, it's the point, your, your goal here is not really to convince them that they need a website. If they're not convinced by the time you've asked all these questions and stuff, then I would say move on. This client is not a good client to work with. In fact, I don't work with all the clients that come to me. I pick and choose which clients that I want to work with. Now you might be thinking, why would you do that? Why would you turn away a client? You know, I've, I've turned away clients that have, you know, pay me a thousand bucks up front or two thousand bucks up front, mainly because I have found out that working with these specific clients, I'm losing time because, you know, they're too nitpicky, they're, I'm not living up to their expectations and things like that. If that's the case, then you're losing out on potential profits and potential clients that you could be having. All right, so third question is how fast do they want it to set up? You want to figure out this because do they want it in a week? Do they want it in, you know, a month? If they want it in a week, you might say, okay, I can't get it done in a week, but because I got such and stuff, but I can fast track your website if you pay me an extra 500 bucks. All right, here's an extra 500 bucks. I need it right away. There you go. So I'm showing you ways that you can, you know, tack on, you know, extra expenses and things like that but at the same time you have a reason for doing that you're not just scamming them or anything like that because your whole end goal is to help them but you want to figure out are they a customer that you can deal with and you know perhaps in the future sell future opportunities or are they company that are very tight on their budget you know they want to have a website so you create a website for them but they're not the type of customer that, you know, wants extra services in the long run. Do they want full control of the content or do they, do they want you to update their content for you? Now, these are two options. Most offline companies that I found want full control of their content. And that's why we're using WordPress. Now, I'm going to actually show you step by step what to do once we get past you know after the planning process so you're gonna see step by step I'm gonna show you step by step how to do all of this if they want full control then guess what you're using WordPress anyways you make it user friendly there you go now if they want you to update their content you can do that but this can be outsourced easily so it doesn't take up your time and you could say, okay, I'm going to charge you, you know, every update, I'm going to charge you 50 bucks, you know, of my time. 50 bucks because an hour of my time. Or I'm going to charge you 300 bucks a month and I'll update their con your content for you. Uh, some companies that are big companies, much rather you update their content. So in that case, you can charge them a monthly fee of, you know, 250, 300 bucks, do that kind of stuff. But guess what? This stuff can be outsourced because WordPress is very, very easy to use. So you could outsource it to the Philippines, get somebody that you know charges you a dollar to three dollars an hour, and just outsource that type of material. Keep the three hundred bucks minus three bucks, and there you go. So as you can see, do it smart, do it right, and you can do it 
well. Step number five, or question number five, is what is their budget? Now, not all companies that come to you are going to be able to afford a minimum of, you know, a thousand bucks. So you need to figure out what is their budget. Are they a company that is tight on their budget, but they still want you to create a website? Because guess what? Setting up WordPress websites is fairly easy to do. But if they have a limited amount of budget and they are on a tight budget, then you gotta keep in mind and tell them that you know there's only so much that you can do on you know 500 bucks or something like that. And with 500 bucks, you could set up a good-looking website, but you could do it fairly quickly. Question number six: What are their expectations of the site? What do they expect? You know, what kind of site? What do they imagine their site is going to look like? You know. You want to get a gauge of what they want. What are the colors, perhaps? You know, ask them, give them a few examples of different sites and ask them to point out which one they like the best. Because what I found is the biggest mistake that I made was to assume that I knew exactly what somebody wanted to create. All right, so let's talk about opening future opportunities. Open future opportunities. What do I mean that by that? What I mean by this is this. If you open future opportunities, you're talking to a client and you find out that oh, they need this, you know, this service could lead to another service and could lead to another service. So that means what I mean by that is you're opening up these holes and finding out options that you can sell them later down the road. So let me give you an example. Are they looking to sell online? If they're having physical products, are they looking to sell online for physical products? How can they automate that process? Are they have it, do they have an intangible product, you know, consultations, you know, accounting, things like that? How can you what can you do to basically open a future opportunity? So, for example, accounting or let's say, like the example that I gave you earlier with the fitness trainer. I said, hey, I'll set you up with a calendar. And on that calendar, people can order online. Uh, so, essentially, they're buying online a spot on the calendar. So if you can figure out if they have opportunities to sell online, that gives you the ability to do shopping cart setup, to set up their site to do that, and of course it'll increase their profits as well. Because they can say, hey, they can tell their clients and say, hey, I've set up a website, I've set up a calendar, just go to the calendar, register your spot, you know, pay me the money or pay me it later, but register the spot and there you go. Or you could tell them you could do a manual process the way that they're doing now, and they could spend half an hour on the phone doing that. Or they could automate automate the process or semi-automate the process. So as you can see, you're making their life easier. And your point is asking the questions and understanding their process of how they're selling so that you can make their process easier build a list can they build a list you know a clientele list sell to that list can they set up an autoresponder if they want to build a list can they do it online through emails which guess what you can set up an autoresponder charge for autoresponder services mobile marketing you can set up you know account with sendtextalerts.com and do unlimited texting through that and help businesses do mobile marketing and maybe charge them a fee you know let's say you could charge them a monthly fee you know ninety seven dollars a month for unlimited texting which is a steal because most sites out there actually charge per text then you want to figure out can video presentations help them let's say they have a website with a video on it for example I was consulting one of my friends um, a while ago 
now that I do marketing, I was, I was saying, okay, he runs a health insurance, he's a health insurance broker, and he also, also does life insurance as well. So I was thinking, okay, you could set up a video presentation that shows people, you know, how they can get approved by health insurance companies. Um, because one of the biggest problems, especially for self-employed people, business owners, is getting health insurance. So I was telling him, set up a video presentation, you know, this and that. If you think about, can this company create video presentations? Because if they can, you can help them create video presentations. Therefore, you include video marketing in it. You can use Traffic Geyser, use that to sell, you know, set up videos on their website, things like that. You're basically opening future opportunities up. And I'm basically giving you ideas on how to do that. So as you can see, it's fairly easily done if you know the company, if you know their needs, and if you know how they sell and their process of doing that. Now let's talk about types of clients. There are many types of clients, but I'm going to type, talk about two types of clients. By now, you have a good idea of you know what they want so you can tell them okay you're going to need this type of site since you run a physical product and you're not really looking to sell online you need an informational website I can set up an informational website for you and blah 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 your website needs to have this this and this I think you need to have videos blah 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 you tell them that and watch their reaction and this is important Watch their reaction. If they say, nah, I don't know about that, and you say, okay, look, this will help increase your conversions because of this. If you've explained to them the reason why they need it, and they look at you and they think, what are you talking about? And, you know, if you've explained it again and again, and they're thinking, oh, I want it set up this way, not that way. I want it this way. So basically, you're figuring out, okay, this client is a micromanager. Micromanagers are the worst people, clients to deal with. In fact, usually once I figure out that a client is a micromanager, then I pretty much, you know, shut off the, the transaction. Because what I found over the years is micromanagers take up a lot of your time, they waste your time, plus, you lose on potential profits. You lose on potential clients that you could be, you know, working with in the long run. You're looking for a client that needs your help. They're seeking your help as a website developer, as a marketer. They're seeking for your help. And, yeah, it's it's okay if they, they tell you, okay, I like the site to look like this. Um, and they have questions. But if they if you get an, a hint that you know for example I want this flashy this and that with blinking lights now I've talked to a lot of friends of mine who own website development companies and they also a lot of times get approached by clients saying you know I want lights I want videos that have blinking lights I go I want this word over here blinking this and that I want a flashy banner things like that you know as a marketer you know what sells and doesn't so you have to tell them straight up. But if they're still persistent about that, then I honestly would leave that client and just, I would jet, really. Because those types of clients are generally, like I said, they waste your time and waste potential profits. So you need to figure out, are they nitpicky? Or are they just the type of person that knows what they want? If they know what they want, but they need some guidance and they need you to help them understand why you are offering or proposing what you're proposing, and then they said, oh, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. They know what they want in terms of the look, that's fine. But if they're nitpicky in terms of not just the look, but also, you know, everything else, like I'm right, you're wrong kind of idea then you need to leave that client alone. Not to say that you're right all the time, but you are the website developer. You're the expert. You know what you're doing. 
you're the marketer, you know what you're doing. Unless you're helping a marketing company, which, by the way, most of the times they'll set up their own websites. But my point here is just to help you so that you don't have to run into these types of clients and waste your time. Unless, of course, you're charging, you know, 70, 50, 75, or $90 an hour. If you're doing that, that's fine. These types of clients are great because, you know, you can change this and change that. But you just got to keep in mind your pricing structure and you could be losing potential clients because, yeah, I mean, you could spend 10 hours or 20 hours on a $50, $50 per hour. That's a thousand bucks. That's fine. You could outsource that kind of stuff. But you honestly probably would be earning a lot more by going after more clients. So that's just something to keep in mind. So will it save, will they save you time or will they waste more of your time and lose potential clients? And can what they are asking be outsourced? You know, if they're the nitpicky type, that's fine. Just keep in mind that they're probably going to stick with you for a long time. Or they're probably going to be pretty upset about you and, you know, make give you lots of headaches and things like that. So can what they are asking be outsourced? If it can be outsourced, then maybe you can just give them access to your outsourcer and have them work with them. 